Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at America's Test Kitchen with Dan Souza. Uh, you're going to show me some of the scientific instrumentation that you guys use to test, well, ingredients. Uh, exactly. As, as you go about uh, doing it, what it is you do, testing food. Absolutely. So, yeah, so right now I'm working with a texture analyzer, um, and this is from Brookfield Engineering, which is right here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, and they lend us stuff from time to time, which is excellent. Right now I have a piece of flank steak. This specific one is cooked to 130 degrees. And what we're testing is a range of temperatures to see at which point we find it to be the most tender. Okay. Now, now we've done taste tests for this, but what's interesting that we found in the past with cuts from the flank, they have wider muscle fibers that at a certain temperature they begin to shrink in diameter. And when they shrink a little bit in diameter, they get more tender. Once they start to shrink in length, which happens at 140 or higher, that's when you see a lot of juices coming out and they start to toughen again. So this is a very, very sensitive piece of equipment that can tell us a little bit more deeply about exactly what temperature is ideal for this cut. So you'll, te you'll cook, um, I assume using like an emerging circular or something like that. Exactly, yep. Tons of the same cut of meat, yep. probably from the same animal, is that the goal or? Yeah, so we actually, we, we do both. Okay. So we, we do a lot from the same animal and then we also vary it um, from cow to cow in this instance. And um, and so we'll test different samples and, and, we'll, and we'll take an average of all of that. So, so I mean, are, is what you're looking, so you're looking for mus muscle fiber shrinking, is, is does collagen come into play here? We're, we're cooking at low enough temperatures that it's not really a big factor. The highest temperature we're doing right now is 140 degrees okay. and we're not keeping them in the circular for very long. We're really just bringing it up to that temperature, which is more closely mimicking someone cooking this this cut at right. home. If you're putting it on a grill, this is about what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen, exactly. Very cool. So how does it actually work? Okay, so right now what I'm testing for is springiness and gumminess, <laughs> um, which are two very technical terms. That, uh, so the springiness is, we'll actually do two readings. So uh, what it's going to do is it's going to go down an impact. I have a trigger load set, so it'll, it'll, it'll know when to start recording, and then it's going to go three millimeters into the meat, mm -hmm. come back out, and then it's going to repeat that exact same process. And it'll measure the difference between the first measurement and the second. So theoretically, this should give us a, a not necessarily a simulation, but the same kind of reaction you get when your teeth first impact the meat when you're taking a bite. Exactly. It's so between the first and second bite is what we're measuring here. Gumminess is the pull that the meat has on that um, on that probe as it pulls out. So how much the meat sticks to the probe. So exactly. So it measures that as well. And if you take those and multiply them together, it's a pretty good simulation of, of mastication, of actually chewing something. So what kind of stuff is a machine like this actually used for if it's not used for testing the toughness of yeah, the this meat? Yeah, is, this is not as normally used. So it's used a lot in industries that want a really consistent product. So if you have a, a noodle that always has to have the same amount of chew, there's different setups and probes you can use to stretch on them and find that break point. Um, it's, it's, it's good for a lot of products, so it, it's really quality control testing individual individual setups. So when will we be able to tell what the right temperature to cook your flank steak to is? Um, I've just kind of started the testing on this, so I'm probably a week or so away from getting enough data that I feel pretty confident about results, so and, we'll see. And your process for this is just to keep going until you find something that you're comfortable with, and then will you take the results and actually cook a cook a piece of steak and Absolutely. see how it turns out? Yeah, because in the end, we really just care most about what people can taste, right? So this is, this is getting a little bit deeper than that, and it's something a little bit more controlled, so we're not depending just on different palettes within the kitchen. But once we have an ideal, we'll test it against some other variables and we'll see what people think. Figure out a common language for describing food. Exactly. And food. Yep. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Dan. Hey, no problem. And of course, we'll have more from America's Test Kitchen on Tested soon. See you guys later. Bye.